My brothers and sisters, the best place on earth is the masjid. There is no doubt. The Prophet ﷺ explained to us in a clear-cut narration where he says, the best part of the earth, the houses of Allah, afdalul biqa'i, which means the best of places, houses of Allah. There is no place you could ever be in that is better than the houses of Allah. And from among those houses of Allah, the best of all of them is al-masjid al-haram in Makkah al-mukarramah. Thereafter, al-masjid al-nabawi in Madinah al-munawwara. Thereafter, al-masjid al-aqsa in Jerusalem. This is the order of the best of places on earth. And after that, all the houses of Allah. Remember, al-masjid baytullahi fil ard. A masjid or a mosque, as they say in the English language, is the house of Allah. It does not belong to me. It does not belong to you. Yes, you might be temporarily a custodian of it in order to fulfill what Allah has asked you to fulfill regarding that particular place. But otherwise, the house belongs to Allah. So anyone who comes in here, they are supposed to be welcome. They are supposed to feel the goodness and when your heart is clean, you will feel the spirituality of this place that Allah has granted blessings. The minute a person declares a certain portion of land as the house of Allah, they cannot change that up to the end of time. It remains the house of Allah forever. May Allah grant us goodness. Now the worst places on earth, according to the same narration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the worst places are the marketplaces. Why? People cheat, they deceive, they lie, they go in there for various reasons. They forget Allah when they become too engrossed in the worldly material items. You start looking at your motor vehicles, you start looking at your clothes, your perfumes, your watches, your business, and you look at how much money you're making or how much money there is to be made. Instead of saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, let me go to the masjid and thank Allah, we go further away from the masjid and we forget Allah. You think it's a good deal. Look at what Qarun said. And Allah gave him a lot. He said, you know, all this wealth that I've got, I only got it because of my brain, my, my sharp shrewdness. But Allah says, oh, we are the ones who gave you that brain in the first place. Business has got nothing to do with your brain. That's the reason why those who go to school and continue to graduate further and become PhD holders, etc., etc., are not necessarily the richest on earth. A lot of the times, the richest on earth haven't really been to school or they've been, but not right to the end or they haven't even done well. That is to show you that Allah gives whomsoever He wishes. Whether you are educated or not is besides the point. In no way am I reducing the importance of being educated. I'm only raising a fact of life. May Allah grant us goodness. So whenever we enter the marketplace, remember Allah. Stop your business and go to the masjid to fulfill your salah. Connect with Allah. It might be your last day in this world. You don't want that day to be such that you did not go to the houses of Allah. We all know that we faced a pandemic. We are still facing it today. But do you know what? Alhamdulillah, the Almighty has taken us out of the brunt of it, insha'Allah. We need to reconnect with the houses of Allah. And remember one very important aspect, my brothers, my sisters. Allah places it in your heart to go to His house. If not, He won't want you there. Allah gives you the energy and the inclination to go to the houses of Allah. Whenever you enter the masjid, thank Allah for accepting you to come there. When you leave the masjid, say, Alhamdulillah, O oh Allah, you gave me the opportunity to fulfill my salah with jama'ah, with the muslimin in your house. Allahu Akbar. It is only when I'm close to you, I can come to your house with ease, without feeling any negativity. When you're not close to me or I'm not close to you, you cannot just come to my house. Who are you, my brother or sister? One might ask. So therefore, a sign of the closeness to Allah of a worshiper is that his heart is connected to the masjid, to the house of Allah. For that very reason, when the Prophet ﷺ was explaining the VIPs of the Day of Judgment, he says, a person whose heart is connected and hanging in the masjid all the time. Connected to the masjid, hanging in the masjid. In the Arabic language, when we say muallaqun bishay'i, it means you are hanging upon a thing, you are connected to it in a way 
that you cannot detach beyond a certain point. Like there is a rope between you and that place tying you. I cannot go so far away because it will bring me back. Subhanallah. You don't lose the way. Take your time. Visit the house of Allah. Fill the masajid. Restrictions have been lifted. Alhamdulillah. We were not really so badly bothered and affected by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we took the required restrictions. We did not close down totally although there were restrictions in place in this country, Zimbabwe. So we are fortunate by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore my brothers and sisters, it is a time for us to reconnect with the house of Allah given the law of the land and the restrictions. Taking them into consideration, we will still fill up the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are connected to Allah. Do you know the best posture that you could ever be in is the posture of sujood. It is the closest you can ever get to Allah. The posture of prostration, the closest that a slave can be to his Lord is when he or she is in prostration. Fall into prostration. Take your time. Prostrate for Allah. And if that prostration happens to be in the house that is most loved by Allah, on land that is most loved by Allah, then why not? Subhanallah. People are saying it is very difficult to go for Umrah. It is very difficult to go, for, for example, to Mecca and Medina. My brothers, my sisters, don't let shaitan make you become rejected simply because you think it is difficult. Begin the process. If you can afford it for Hajj, begin the process. Start learning the rules and regulations of Hajj with the intention I'm going to go inshallah. Whether the door opens or not is in the hands of Allah. You want to go? Start learning from now. What's the rules? What do I have to do? When do I have to go? How can I go? Etc. Allah will reward you. Allah will open your doors. If you die prior to that, wallahi, you get a full reward of your hajj. Although you, you would not have been considered from among those who have fulfilled the hajj, the reward is a different matter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Do you know that when you are connected to the house of Allah, when you walk to the masjid early morning, late at night, or when you come by vehicle to the masjid early morning, late at night, do you know that you are in the guard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the night or the morning? Do you know that you have done something the most blessed? On the day of judgment, there will be certain people with a complete nur, a total light, shining like you cannot believe. Who are those? So this hadith says, they are the ones who used to go to the masajid, the houses of Allah in the darkness of the night. Subhanallah. Salatul Isha, Salatul Fajr. Make yourself available. Allah will open your doors. Make an effort. Forsake your bedding. When Allah describes His beloved slaves and those who love Him a lot, and those whom he is close to, do you know what he says? One of the qualities, two of the qualities Allah makes mention here. Allah says at night. The worship of Allah for his beloved worshippers is more beloved than the sleep that is also so cozy. Subhanallah. How cozy is it to sleep? Beautiful bedding. The more money you have, the better the bedding you purchase. The better the duvet. The more grand the air conditioning unit and so on. All of those, while they are a blessing of Allah, they will also be a means that shaitan can use to distract you from the same Allah. Why? I have a beautiful home. I have a lovely bedding. I have a nice system. Now I'm sleeping, snoring. I am supposed to be thanking Allah more, getting up and praying to Allah at night when everyone is sleeping. But because everything is so comfortable, shaitan came and told me, don't worry, just sleep. Allah is ghafoor, rahim, is forgiving, merciful. You can do qada just now, which means you can do prayer out of its time. No, my brother, my sister, Allah gave you more. You should be closer to Allah. And that is why, listen to the verse. It is in Surah Al-Sajdah. We read it this morning for Salatul Fajr in this particular masjid. And do you know what it means? It means the ones who are beloved unto Allah and whom Allah loves, they forsake their beddings. They can come out of their beds without any problem. They are quick to come out of the bed. Are you one of those? Can you come out of your bed very fast? You are tired. It's a beautiful bed. You are enjoying your dream. My brother, 
Don't let the enjoyment of that dream distract you from the joy of the worship of Allah. Because in that case, you will not enjoy your reality. You will only enjoy your dream. Which is more important? For me to enjoy a dream and get up to depression. Or for me to have a nightmare but be content later on. So this is why Allah says, they, the true worshippers of Allah, they forsake their beddings, they leave their bed. No problem. What is sleep? I'll sleep again. Let me get up and worship Allah, whether it is at home for Salatul Tahajjud, which is a prayer that you will fulfill very early before Salatul Fajr. Try it out. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, once a month, get up for Tahajjud. Once a month, set your clock and then you will see you will love it so much. You will do it once a week. Then you will love it so much. You will do it every day. Recently, there was a brother, one of our relatives who passed away in South Africa. And one of the ulama was telling me that he is in that masjid every day for Salatul Fajr. One day they had breakfast together and they spent some time together. And he was crying. This uncle who passed away a few weeks ago, he was crying. Why are you crying uncle? He said, it's okay. He was still crying, meaning tears were rolling down his cheeks. Why are you crying? He said, no, it's okay. And he was still crying. When he asked him again, the uncle said, you know, I'm so sad. For the first time in 17 years, I missed Salatul Tahajjud today. Subhanallah. And when you see him, you wouldn't believe that this person actually has never missed Salatul Tahajjud for 17 years. And here we are thinking we are holy, we are pious, we are Muslim, we are a big deal, we know we are this, we are that. We don't even get up properly on time for Salatul Fajr. And we don't even make an effort to come to the masjid. May Allah forgive all of us, including myself. If anything, take your precautions, come to the houses of Allah. Fill them up. Show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know what? You come first before everything else and before anyone else. And we definitely declare it's the best place on earth because you declared it the best places on earth. So the verse says they forsake their beddings. What's the next part of the verse? I told you it's important because when you go out and you do your business, listen carefully. I started off this talk by telling you the best places on earth are the masjids and the worst places on earth are the marketplaces. So Allah tells you those who are close to me, they forsake their beddings in order to fulfill salah. And what do they do? They spend from what we've given them. When you make a big business deal before thinking of what you're going to purchase with the profit you've actually made, think of what charity you're going to give with the amount Allah has bestowed upon you. Build your Jannah, your paradise before you build your life here. Many of us, as soon as you see money, the first thing you think about is, I'll buy a car, I'll buy a house, I'll buy this, I'll get new clothes, I'll get married, I'll get married. I noticed I repeated that a few times. The most important thing is for you to say, I'm going to live for a little while here on earth. How much am I going to spend to build my eternity? Let me take out a small amount, give it to charity. Give zakah, give sadaqat more than the zakah, give it. So Allah says, when you learn to love Allah more than your wealth, you end up giving that wealth out in the cause of Allah. But when you love your wealth more than Allah, you want to keep your wealth and you are not going to spend it and you will die and you haven't spent your wealth. In Islam, it's not good to say this person has amassed a wealth. Yes, Allah will give you. What's more important is how much did they give? Not how much did they get? How much did you give? That's what makes you a real person. Have you ever come across that surah? What does Allah say in that surah? Allah says, Allah is expressing the destruction upon a certain type of people who gather their wealth and they keep counting it. How much do I have? Today I have a hundred thousand more. Yesterday I, have, I had a hundred thousand less. Tomorrow, oh, now I made my million. Now I made another million. Now I'm going to make ten. Now I'm going to go. Allah says, those are the ones we are talking about here. Jama amalan wa'addadahu. He, his whole aim in life is to gather wealth and keep counting how much he has. How much do I have? How much do I have? You should be ashamed. Ask yourself, how much time do I have in this dunya with people dying left, right and center? How long do you have on earth? How much have you spent so that your Jannah will be made forever? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And that's why, look at the two. Whenever you go into the marketplace, what did I say? Remember Allah. When the time of Salah comes in, cut everything, stop it. Go to the house of Allah, fulfill your prayer with all goodness and calmness. Fulfill your prayer as though it's the last one that you are going to fulfill. Allah will give you goodness. But what do we do? The other way around. You come for Salah so quick you want to leave the masjid as though there is some fire in the house of Allah. A'udhu Billah. The fire is within you. Shaitan is entrapping you to say, this is the best place on earth. But Shaitan wants you to get out quickly. No, sit. 
relax, engage in the dhikr of Allah, read some Quran, even if it is one verse, this place will bear witness for you that you sat here for so long. You don't want the place to say, this person only sat here for one and a half minutes, 90 seconds and they ran away. Sit there, do your sujood, no problem, take your time. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, what I'm talking about here is the true investment of the hereafter. There are people more powerful than you and I who are already back with Allah. There are people who are wealthier than you and I would ever be. They are back with Allah. They either built their hereafter or they lost it. What do you want to do? I'm speaking reality, facts. This is the house of Allah. Do you love it? Do you like to come to it? If that is the case, your heart is inshallah in the correct place. But if you don't like to come to it and you're not bothered with it and when you see it, you pass by and you know it's the time of Salah. There is something wrong. You are being entrapped by shaitan. Like I told you, the virus, yes, we know about it. Yes, there were restrictions and there are some restrictions, but the restrictions have eased to a great degree. Take your precautions and come to the house of Allah. Just like you take your precautions and go and do everything else, right? Everything else is moving. Why is the house of Allah not moving? Subhanallah. Fill it up again. Fill it up more than it was before. May Allah grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, these are a few words I thought I would share because it's a passionate call once again to say, if this is the best place that Allah has declared through the lips of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Afdalul Biqa, the best of all places are Al Masajid, the houses of Allah. Surely you should be here and so should I. And when you come for Salah, come a few minutes early, perhaps read some Quran, do some dhikr, and then you fulfill your Salah. Stay over for a little while. You can do your sunnah. You can do your nafil perhaps. What else? You can engage in a little bit of dhikr and then you can walk out. We are spending much more time with the worldly material life than we are with Allah to prepare for the hereafter. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah guide my heart and yours to be connected to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May he never punish us in a way that we cannot even come to his own house. May he never make us from among those who witness another day or another pandemic in any way whatsoever that would restrict our coming to his house. Amen. Make dua. Call out to Allah. Oh Allah, let restrictions be lifted. Oh Allah, let this pandemic be eradicated. Call out to Allah every day. I met a businessman one day in another country. I told him how's things. He said, couldn't be better. I said, mashallah, say alhamdulillah. He said, alhamdulillah. I said, what business are you into? He said, everything to do with COVID. So I said, Subhanallah, do you make dua that it goes? He says, no, I make dua, it stays. Why? Because he's making money out of it. La ilaha illallah. If Allah gave you a few days where you can make money out of something, it doesn't mean you must pray that the pandemic stays and everybody is suffering just because you're making money out of it. But that is the heart of some people. He said, shukran for reminding me. Because he's a Muslim and he believes. But some people, even if you remind them, they say, no, 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 this is a good thing. May Allah forgive us. Bottom line. Ask yourself, how do I feel when it comes to the masjid? How do I feel when it comes to attending the house of Allah? Do I have a positive feeling? Will I make an effort? Will I take my precautions and still go? Or am I going to chicken out? Perhaps Allah has rejected you. Perhaps Allah is keeping you away. Perhaps shaitan has entrapped you. Therefore, come back and come back and do your best. You don't know how many days or hours or minutes or seconds you have left on earth. Wouldn't it be the best death to die in the masjid in the position of sujood? Well, if you're not there, what's the possibility? Zero. At least if you're there so often, it can happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness.